Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. Um, my name is Alexandra Kuzmanovic, and it's Wednesday. It's our time uh, to answer your questions about COVID-19 situation. Um, today, we actually have a special session on COVID-19 and mental health considerations. And given the, the high interest in this subject and questions that you are sending us quite often, um, I'm pleased to be joined by our Director for Mental Health um, and Substance Abuse Department, Devorah Kestel. Hello. Hello, Devorah. Thank you for finding the time to be with us. Sure. Um, we, we had similar session last summer, um, but pandemic is ongoing and uh, we are feeling more and more of a fatigue and everyone uh, has been affected in different ways, uh, including our mental health with, with this pandemic. Um, but can you maybe elaborate to, to start with before we start receiving questions from our viewers on what have been the major impacts of the pandemic on people's mental health? Thank you, Alex, and thank you for this opportunity and the interest on, on this topic. Uh, we, we have been discussing uh, for a while about the um, anxiety that uh, the current uh, situation has been creating for a, for a long while already now. The um, uh, emotional in general impact uh, that could be translated into uh, a more uh, stress or in uh, um, some specific uh, issues related to uh, coping mechanisms that were used to uh, face the challenges that we have uh, in terms of isolation, in terms of lack of contact, the, the fear that we felt uh, for what was coming and uh, the uncertainty that we still have because now we know a lot more than what we knew back uh, a year mm -hmm. ago, but still we don't know when and how this is going to and, and it's still uncertain who uh, close to us will be impacted and what will be the consequences of all of that so again the the, the manifestations may, may may change from one to the other but basically we we see we hear we read about uh, most of us being mm -hmm. somehow impacted in our mental health thank you Deborah. and do we know maybe from previous global crisis or uh, emergency situations, which populations are the most affected? Is it children? Is it young adults, elderly? Uh, in this situation in particular for long, uh, older people had to stay at home uh, and no have contact with other people. So it may be additional anxiety or stress. Um, so do we have any, any learnings from before that we are seeing now? The learnings from previous experiences are maybe not so easy to translate into this one because this has been mm -hmm. particular but you named children you named adolescents you named all the older adults I, i'm afraid that maybe nobody has been excluded from mm -hmm. this because children and, and young adolescent kids uh, not going to school or the challenges of schooling at home for example uh, parents also taking care of that mm, women uh, frequently doing a number of jobs that more uh, more, more jobs than uh, what we used to at once, but also all their adults, as you said, people being isolated. Uh, my mother, 83 years, uh, has been out only to go to a medical appointment, otherwise mm -hmm. she's locked uh, at home and uh, on her own most of the time, just to bring it to the personal uh, aspect. But so it, it is a bit everybody uh, that has been uh, affected. Thank you, and um, you, you mentioned women and staying at home, children not going to school and still having to do work uh, throughout the day. And I've been on many calls with my colleagues from around the world who have children uh, making noise around and they are not sure what they're doing when they're playing. And I really admire um, for, for managing house, work and children yeah. at, at the same time. And, and not everybody has, um, from, from those who have the opportunity like ourselves to work, in this current situation not everybody has the opportunity to face flexibility in that uh, context so not for everybody is easy to have the kids uh, jumping on, uh, on their lap while they are having a, a, a meeting some uh, contexts are more flexible than others so it has been a serious challenge for many uh, thank you, Deborah. Um, I would just remind our viewers uh, that they can ask questions if they're watching us on Twitter by using the hashtag AskWHO. If you're watching us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, as usual, you can ask questions through the comment section. Um, 
there were a, we mentioned some contexts and um, population groups that may be under more stress, pressure, and anxiety. What are the drivers of of anxiety in in the pandemic that we can identify? We named uh, some earlier. Um, definitely, the the fear. Uh, definitely the, the not knowing what is coming next, when is this going to be over, uh, the fatigue that you mm. mentioned also earlier. We are also talking about uh, losing uh, loved ones. Uh, we are talking about people next to us getting ill, uh, sick and not knowing what's going to be the outcome of mm. that. Uh, plus the isolation, the, the, the challenges of not being able to, to live our life as we used to, uh, each one of those uh, facts will have uh, an impact on uh, our, our anxiety and how do we manage it. And of course, as everything, I mean, we, we, we have witnessed that the pandemic does not uh, dis distinction in terms of uh, groups of population that is affecting and the same is valid for mental health. But at the end of the day, you may have less or more resources to cope with those mm -hmm. uh, challenges, right? So depending again on what is the background, what is the, the context you are in, how well or not so well you will manage that anxiety. Thank you, Devora. And on Monday, Dr. Tedros mentioned that uh, we reached a very sad milestone of losing over 3 million people to COVID-19. and. He reminded us that actually behind every of these numbers is a tragedy for a family, community, nation. Um, and we, we can't forget as well that so many people are actually grieving after losing, uh, losing a loved one. And what may be some supporting mechanisms for those who are in grief and who may have been even more under stress because of um, economic loss, um, not being able to see friends and family to get support that they need at, at, this, at this moment? This is a very difficult uh, situation uh, for, for, for everybody, as we are saying, and particularly for those who lost uh, someone, a loved one. And I think that what is important is that we allow ourselves to grieve, precisely. We are going through, we may be going through a very difficult time, and we need to allow ourselves to be sad, to be uh, not able to do things as we used to, to find alternative ways to process this loss. Mm -hmm. Because we, depending on the culture we, we grew up uh, in, we have been uh, used to one way of uh, dealing, for example, with a funeral, with, with, uh, with, with, with the entire process of, of uh, um, saying goodbye mm -hmm. to a loved one. Well, may, some of those uh, uh, rituals may not be feasible at this mm -hmm. point in time. We need to find alternative ones. So we need to find the time and the moment alone or in distant uh, contact with uh, someone we love to go through the, the person we lost, to, to go through our memories, to go through the issues that make us feel, um, I'm sorry, I have my own uh, experience there as well, but the issues that make you feel that you are paying the, the, the respect and, and, and expressing the love for the one you lose, no matter what is the uh, situation mm -hmm. outside. It's, it's an internal process mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Being with other people you love is very important. If you can't be physically together, well, you can be uh, uh, by, uh, by, uh, in contact by phone or, 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 or writing or, or any other way that we can. That is as well very important. Thank and then it's going to be, sorry, there is no. going to come the time when we will be able to go in the traditional mm -hmm. way and pay the respects that we, that we are used to. Thank you. And here is a, just a feedback to this uh, from Lynn Lavorna Mecrea, watching us on Facebook. Excellent discussion about grief process from unexpected loss. So just wanted to, to, to share this, this feedback. Thank you. And I see a next question from uh, Holly Plummer, also watching us on Facebook, saying that the anxiety of being separated from your family, not being able to hold or hug them, the overall concern for everyone and their health above and beyond your own. Yeah. I, I fully agree. I think that uh, we are aware of that, and, uh, and being aware is the first step in, in feeling a bit better already, right? Yes. 
Um, do Deborah, how how people who already have some mental health uh, condition and who need help and support, do we know if if and we know that not everyone has access to to mental health care, and that we've been working a lot throughout past years to um, raise awareness, reduce stigma, and to encourage people who need help to, to seek it. Um, how this pandemic has uh, impacted that work, and um, are we seeing that people are having la even less access to healthcare, and how we can help someone if we know them um, in this situation, if they can't really reach the care? Thank you, Alex, because this is a very important question. You know that we did a survey to assess how services were uh, disrupted in the area specific of mental, neurological, and substance use, and the disruption was uh, very important. I mean, 93% of countries said that at least one service was disrupted, and some of the services that mo were most affected are those that are needed today, that are community-based services, school services for children, etc. So we have uh, the advantage today of um, the media and, the, and, the, and the, the applications and the online services that are extremely helpful. We, we have developed also our own coping with stress, with very simple exercises, for example, that if you do on daily basis, you learn to, to cope better with mm -hmm. those problems. And, and, and this is something that anyone can do. Um, and, and, and uh, it, it is easier to, to access uh, to others. Now, people with already existing mental health conditions definitely will be um, more um, vulnerable in the current situation. And it is important then that we reach out to those people, that we make sure that alternative treatments are there or alternative care is available. So if the person was followed up by a professional, we need to reach out to that uh, professional or to that network that was provided, providing help uh, earlier. A lot of uh, mechanisms have been reactivated, if not the traditional service, alternative ones. And the community is still there. With all the lockdowns and with all the challenges, the neighbor is still there to grab the phone mm -hmm. and talk and um, activate somebody else that may need the help. It is important that there is continuation of medicines, if that was part of the deal mm -hmm. before, and then how to make sure that those uh, medical uh, treatments are still available. And uh, there are, again, um, ways to uh, learn how to help mm -hmm. others. Uh, we have plenty of tools uh, mm -hmm. that we uh, made available together mm -hmm. with partners, and I invite everybody to look at our website. Maybe we can add later the link where you can find really uh, helpful uh, and easy to, to manage uh, information to, to help others and to help, help ourselves as well. Thank you, Devora. Um, here's a question uh, from Jed Okai. What would be the mechanism on addressing suicidal issues during COVID-19? Thank you, Jed. This is very, very important. We, um, uh, you know, the, the, there is uh, a lot of uh, stigma around uh, suicide. There, there has been a lot of stigma and still is. And so how to address that is very important. And the first uh, issue would be to talk to the person and to find out if the person has these suicidal, suicidal, sorry, suicidal thoughts and how to um, discuss about the reasons behind, if, if possible, and uh, uh, um, reach out to uh, professional help as soon as needed or as soon as considered a need. Mm -hmm. That professional help could be a person at a, at a clinic if available, but otherwise there are a lot of, again, uh, uh, tools available, uh, SOS uh, hotlines, uh, um, uh, online communication that could be made available for that. We, uh, and, and this is important, uh, very important in this link with uh, previous issues, we have been advocating, and I think that altogether we should advocate for um, uh, increase the attention to mental health by making sure that all health professionals that are out there pay attention also to this and, and, and intervene in order to prevent uh, extreme measures like uh, suicide. Thank you, Devora. Maybe we can remind as well our viewers on what are some of the signs that we can 
maybe notice if someone around us is not well and try to, to offer help or, or to talk to? Sure, that is, uh, uh, the list may be um, long and difficult to summarize, but definitely uh, we, are talking, we were talking earlier about grief, for example, and it is, as I was uh, trying to, to, to say, uh, it is normal to feel sad. Now, when that becomes persistent, mm -hmm. when, when this sadness becomes um, the only mood over the day and day after day, and when the person uh, becomes unable to do things that were uh, being done earlier, and so when the grief becomes uh, something that is hard to, 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 to move away from, then that may be a sign, for example. When any of the other uh, the anxiety, the stress that we talked about, when any of those uh, issues become an obstacle to our life, that is a sign to be worried about. I can be uh, stressed because I need to do a Facebook uh, Live, but I'm here talking to you and I can manage that, right? Now, if that stress impedes, um, it becomes really an obstacle for me to, to mm -hmm. talk, to, to do my job, then that is something to worry about. It's not a big deal if it happens once or twice. It may become a deal if uh, something serious, if uh, it's a routine and, 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 and we are unable to do. And this could be, uh, we are talking about stress, anxiety, depression, but we also know that some um, of the challenges in this isolation that we went through have, have been uh, coping uh, not in a very, with very healthy means mm -hmm. and so increase of alcohol or, or uh, consumption of uh, substances which also may become uh, a serious mm -hmm. problem to, to be worried or to take care of. Thank you very much Devorah. Um, in, in, you mentioned stress management and um, I just wanted to, to maybe remind our viewers about the stress management guide that we have. Um, maybe you can just uh, uh, tell us more a little bit and where can we, where can our viewers find it on the, on the website? It's great that I brought the printed copy <laughs> because I think it's, it is very useful. You mm -hmm. can find it in, on our website and it is, uh, there is a link on our WhatsApp. If you, if you type mm -hmm. uh, uh, stress, you will be uh, taken to this. It's available in several languages. And it is a, a, a guide, a very simple illustrated guide, the same designs that you see here, you see inside. Oops, sorry. Uh, and uh, it takes you through uh, a different uh, exercise, very specific. Everything is based on scientific evidence and a very uh, a specific exercise that um, guide you on how to deal with that stress, how to manage the stress. The stress, the reasons behind may not completely disappear, but you learn how to uh, deal with them. And that is very, really a helpful exercise that you can spend 10 minutes every day doing, and then you will learn how to manage with that uh, automatically. Thank you, Devorah, and, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned our WhatsApp chatbot that we actually built when the pandemic started to provide people online service, additional online service um, with advice not only on COVID-19 infection prevention and, and situation, but including mental health and how to, to, to cope with stress. Thank you, thank you so much for mentioning that. Um, we are receiving a couple of questions about health workers and um, what has been done to support health workers who are on the front line of the pandemic to cope with stress and the pressure and grief as they are facing directly people, people who are losing their lives. The, thank you. The, the, the health workers uh, are actually one of the vulnerable groups that we should consider. And uh, as you well said, they are um, uh, prone to any of these issues that we were uh, talking about as anybody else, but they are more exposed than many of us to, to, the, to the challenges, to the stress, to the low, loss, uh, losing people around. I think that uh, some of the issues that we advise for ourselves in terms of taking care of our own mental health are very relevant for, for, for them. Uh, first of all, to try to find uh, uh, some time in between uh, their, their shifts, to have a uh, decent uh, uh, routine uh, in, in, their, in their working routine, to find uh, to to find to ha identify time to do something for themselves, something that is uh, uh, 
pleasant to find time to communicate with uh, their family, friends, loved ones, to find space to talk to each other and to share the difficult times that are there. Um, but then it is also very important for managers of those health workers to make sure that some of these spaces are given. And also at this point in time, I will expect many more health workers to first uh, responders to receive, and that's again responsibility of managers, to receive basic uh, psychological first aid uh, guidance, to receive basic tools to take care of themselves and to listen and take care of others. If I can go with another personal anecdote, I, I, I have a very dear uh, colleague, a friend who, uh, who, whose mother, 80 years old, healthy woman, got sick and in a few weeks uh, she, she was gone. But during those couple of weeks that uh, she was in a, in a hospital, he was, my friend was trying his best to, 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 to be there. And uh, the, there was no way that the health workers could find any way to uh, facilitate that communication. And my friend was calling me saying, you work at WHO, you're mental health, how can this be? What can we do? And I think that we need at this point to everybody, we hear a lot of good experiences from many places mm -hmm. and many health workers doing things to make this human contact mm -hmm. possible, whether it is by sharing a piece of paper if an mm -hmm. iPad is not there for a video call, something that will bring both sides of the, and the, and the health personnel uh, himself or herself, also some kind of relief of feeling that we are doing something else when, when, when not much can be done. So a, a bit of this uh, compassion that is, is felt can come out, yes. can be demonstrated, and that will be very good, healthy for them and for those around. Now when you mentioned this, um, I read a story about um, one hospital in Brazil and I think they are treating children who, who get sick with COVID and how health workers collected money and bought some tablet or tablets so that actually um, children can see their parents and parents can see them because also when, when children don't feel well they, they want their parents to Absolutely. be there and to, to that, that calms them down. So um, just um, one I, anecdote I, on an amazing example of what health workers are actually Absolutely. doing. Absolutely, and in many other cases, you see similar examples in homes, for example, for older adults, that mm -hmm. uh, you see that there is this, uh, this uh, effort in trying to find ways for them to understand that they have not been left alone mm -hmm. because of lack of love, mm -hmm. but it's the situation and that sometimes uh, is hard to understand. So there are plenty of examples from mm -hmm. um, from uh, health workers doing amazing job apart from the specific um, uh, treatment that is offered. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the, uh, the other elements that help the mental health of the health mm -hmm. worker, of the patient, of the family members. So there are these actions that should contribute. Thank you very much, Devora. Here is the question about children. We mentioned that children's, uh, children are uh, very affected as well. Uh, in the pandemic. So a viewer from LinkedIn is saying this pandemic is hard for all of us, but especially children. How can we talk to children about coronavirus without making them more anxious? Well, I have a good answer for you. And it's again uh, a suggestion to, um, for you to look at uh, another material that we uh, developed that is called My Hero Is You. And this is a, a story book for, for kids that um, through this uh, fictional character that is Ario, <laughs> that is uh, um, some kind of a dragon, um, uh, we explain to children how to, uh, what is going on and how to deal with what is going on. And it's a, um, I, I, I really recommend it. It, it has been translated in 137 languages, so it's, it's very popular. And it's a, a good uh, also tool to communicate for uh, carers or parents to read the story to the kids and to explain in, in an easy way. Uh, what is going on. So that is one example. I'm sure that there are many others out there that are um, facilitating this explanation of the situation without generating more fear mm -hmm. or anxiety. 
Thank you, Deborah, and um, I thank our viewers really for great questions. And we'll, we'll share the links to all the tools that you mentioned afterwards so that they can actually access if they haven't had a chance to access it before. Um, here is a question from Hassan uh, Tarabai. Is there, um, so he's saying that in, at a local level, local communities, there is a huge emphasis on vaccination efforts and there's almost no attention given to mental health. So is there some plan to overcome these obstacles by encouraging and working with local authorities to focus more on COVID-related mental conditions and ways to deal with it? Thank you, Hassan, for that very important question because uh, we, we say in the same way we are uh, emphasizing the need to wear the, the mask and the physical distance and the washing the hands and the vaccine. Similarly, we need to take care of, of uh, mental health and there are things that can be done. You know that we work with, uh, with uh, mostly with, uh, with um, governments, ministries of health and national level and so there is an effort and countries, uh, many countries are aware of the situation and they are uh, committed to improve the work they do uh, on mental health. So there is uh, an effort th that has been uh, recently developed and that we hope it will translate soon into action not only at the high um, national level, but also at the local level, the community level. There are things that can be done. We need to work around them uh, to make them happen. Thank you, Deborah. Um, there were some questions coming um, about, do we know if people who have been infected with COVID, that the, the infection or disease have had some uh, psychological consequences? You know, we are um, uh, monitoring a bit the situation and collecting uh, the information that, that, that is being produced. We do see some uh, symptoms of uh, fatigue and uh, some uh, neurological uh, issues that could be lasting uh, long, some depression as well uh, that it, it could last uh, um, after uh, for a few months, but it is still soon for us to talk about the consequences. It, we are still in the middle, medium term. It, it, we, we don't, we, 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 are, we are observing, we are collecting information, we are uh, looking at what is happening. Similarly, the numbers of people with uh, all these mental health issues we've been talking about has been increasing, but as situations go back to some kind of normality, some numbers may go down again, others will continue. So we still need to be alert and, and, and uh, see what, what is really happening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Devora. Um, you mentioned this um, um, stage of that we're all going through um, uh, fatigue and uh, we are seeing for longer time that in general people are in fatigue. Um, to continue practicing the measures to stay safe from the virus um, and that people are, I can't do this anymore and I don't want to do this more and when are we going to go back to normal? Um, and we don't see that the end is um, close. We do have the tools, but we don't know. Um, so what would be your advice uh, for our viewers and for people around the world how to cope with fatigue? How do you cope with this fatigue? Well, I think that we need to reinvent ourselves uh, regularly here. I mean, I don't think there is a magic answer. And if there is, I don't know it. I mean, it is, uh, we, we all feel the fatigue and sometimes it's harder and uh, we need to go back to the beginning. And in, again, we keep using the mask, we keep uh, washing our hands, we keep uh, keeping the distance and then we need to keep uh, investing on our own well-being. It is not coming granted. I mean, it's not, it is not something that automatically we will have as it is not in normal, so-called normal times, right? But right now, we need to, I mean, I'm sure we have all gone through a period that doing that physical exercise that we advise we should do has not been easy. And then suddenly we say, okay, you know what? I need to go back to my yoga class. And I personally, that's what I have done recently. Again, after the break of a month or two, then again, back to uh, the, the, the activities, back to those things that I enjoy doing, whether the, you live in a situation where the weather becomes nicer, use that as an excuse to go out. If the weather is not nice, use that as an excuse to listen to music or read a book or watch a movie or 
have fun with your dog or with your child or with find the way to uh, get out of this situation that is hard for all of us. Uh, thank you, Deborah. And uh, just maybe a, a, a last point. I wanted to add that if your loved ones are not around, use digital technologies to um, to connect. But use, using digital technologies and over flood of information can also create an anxiety. So maybe some advice as well, how to use digital technologies, but not in a harmful way for our mental health and well-being, uh, but to, to do that in a, in a healthy manner, but still to stay informed. I think that uh, this is very important, Alex, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a balance, right? So we need to be informed, but the once we are informed, that's it for today. Now we, we, we switch into something else and then we use the digital technology to have fun or to communicate with our loved ones and to do alternative things. I always uh, want to emphasize that not everybody has access to digital technology. Maybe those who are watching us now do have. But, uh, but we always need to keep in mind the communities that do not have that access and how we need to put in place uh, mechanisms uh, and resources that are valid also for those who don't have that access. So a uh, balance between things uh, is, is always the, the healthier uh, mm -hmm. option there. Thank you, Devora. And um, I think given all the messages and um, the main message, I think you would maybe agree with what uh, our viewer HR Hatton has uh, written, self-care is a priority. Absolutely. So that even as we're going through the very hard um, phase and crisis, that as we are taking care of others or are being worried about others, but that we need to um, take care of ourselves in the, in the first place to get through this. This is absolutely true. It's true always and everywhere. Now it requires a bit more effort from our side in order to make sure that we get there, in order to make sure that we don't let it go, that we don't uh, abandon ourselves to a situation that is hard. So yeah. how do we make sure that, and we can, we can do it, we can cope with the terrible situation. The human being is, is, is strong uh, in, nature, in nature. We, 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 we adapt, we, we find our way, and we overcome challenges. That's in general how, who we are. So this is uh, one more opportunity to show that. Thank you, Devora. Um, and I really thank all our viewers from Poland, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, UK, Switzerland, France, South Africa, Canada, uh, Timor-Leste, Cambodia, Pakistan, Egypt, um, Slovenia, Germany, Argentina, your country, <laughs> uh, Rwanda, Jamaica, Kenya, Iran, Peru, Cuba, Haiti, Brazil, um, Togo, Japan, Laos. So it's, uh, it's really a Amazing. long list and uh, I really thank you all for watching us. Um, I, I would advise to please uh, follow our guidance, our, our the updated information on the website, social media channels, not only on how to stay safe from COVID-19, but how to cope with all the stress and anxiety and fatigue we are all, all going through. And as Devora and our viewers said, self-care is priority. Thank you. Thank you.